Listen, stories go in circles. They don't go in straight lines. So it helps if you listen in circles because there are stories inside and stories between stories and finding your way through them is as easy and hard as finding your way home. And part of the finding is getting lost. And when you're lost, you really start to open up and listen. Corey Fisher, coming from a great distance, 1978. In this video, we will show you how you can conduct restorative community building circles in a virtual environment. Online circles contain all of the elements of an in-person circle and offer an important opportunity to stay connected while remote. The circle in this video is an example of a small community building circle. For larger audiences, we recommend that elements such as welcome and opening, um, mindful moment and values rounds are facilitated in a large group, while the storytelling rounds can be done in smaller groups or breakout rooms. Everyone should come back together for the closing round. It is also important to check in with your audience regarding their technology needs and how they are entering the process. Determine if participants are coming in by phone, by computer or laptop, or by tablet, and confirm everyone is able to connect ver verbally and use the chat function. Ask everyone to set their participant screens to gallery view on the platform you are using so they can all see each other. The Google Bitmoji virtual circle is an example of an online image that can be used to prepare participants for the virtual circle. This image shows the group sitting in a semicircle with the centerpiece or the rug in the middle and the talking pieces, objects on the rug. Facilitators may also use a photo of a group in the circle to review the elements and set the context for the circle. Okay, ready? Let's get started. Welcome everyone. Hello. I'd like to welcome you officially to today's community building circle. As we start, I'd like to ask that you keep your video on throughout the circle and um, turn your uh, screen to gallery view so you can see everybody and not just me or whoever's talking. As a reminder of the circle components, I'd like that um, to ask everyone to just hold up your talking piece, the talking piece you chose for today's circle. And we all have one, perfect. All right, great. And so this is what we're gonna be using and passing to each other so we can maintain the circle order. And we'll explain um, how that works later if anybody forgot. We're gonna get started today with the welcome and check-in rounds. Um, for the check-in, what I'd like to do is, and we can ask everyone to use the chat, but I'm gonna share my screen. Um, and on the screen, there's a thermometer. Um, it's a feeling thermometer. Please write the number of how you feel. Find yourself kind of on the thermometer, and then you can drop the number in the chat of how you're feeling. Um, and I am, I'm kind of like a between the three and five range personally, but let's see where everybody else is. Zade, you're a two, that's awesome, relaxed and happy. Um, Jaya, you're a four, me too, girl. And then um, Christina and Cindy are at a three, perfect. Um, what I'd also like is just so we can get to know each other um, is maybe one by one, um, we can go around the circle and introduce ourselves. So share our name um, and maybe share uh, one yummy thing that we ate in the past week that we liked. And I can model. So my name is Inam. Um, for those of you guys who don't know me, um, and I'm very excited to be here with you guys today. And something yummy that I had, oh, on Monday, I made these, 
There were sesame beef tacos with ground beef um, and pickled onions. They were, they were pretty good. Um, so uh, who wants to go next? Yeah, go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Hi everyone, um, I'm Zaid. Uh, something great I had this week is um, me and my friends went to a local pizza shop um, and had some really, really good pizza. I'm a big pizza fan, so it was nice to be able to have like a really good slice so close to where I live. So uh, that was what I had earlier. Thanks, Zaid. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, my name is Jaya. And something I ate yummy. Um, yesterday I had hook and rail. I really love seafood. So I got a seafood bowl, you and it was amazing. And I'm gonna go eat the rest after this. <laughs> <laughs> you said leftovers on deck. I'm gonna have to come over and uh, maybe have some of those with you, share with you. Um, thank you, Jay. Uh, who wants to go next? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, my name is Christina, and something that was yummy that I had was baked mac and cheese. So that was something that was good to me. Thank you so much. And I do prefer baked versus stovetop. Are you a, a baked mac and cheese person? Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> Excellent taste. And last but not least, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Cindy. Um, something good that I had was Chipotle. It was really yummy. Mm -hmm. I've been trying not to order out food this week, but Chipotle is definitely my week. <laughs> um, so, so happy to have you guys in circle with me today. What we're going to do now, since we, we know everyone and we've checked in, is we're going to move into our mindful moment. And the purpose of a mindful moment is to kind of get yourself grounded in your body um, and kind of all ready and set uh, to start with our storytelling rounds, which will be next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a short video that will lead you in or lead all of us in a breathing exercise. Exercise. Um, it'll say inhale and exhale. And what um, I might suggest that y'all do is you, when you inhale, go ahead and inhale through your nose. So deep breath in through your nose. And when it says exhale, go ahead and blow all of that air out through your mouth. So inhale through your nose and out through your mouth. And I will play the video now. Awesome. And I'll ask that you come on back. I definitely feel a bit more grounded in my body and hope you guys do as, as well. Um, so what we're going to do next is actually um, we're going to open our circle officially with a poem. Um, it is written by Amanda Gorman, who is the youth poet laureate um, and it's really beautiful. I thought it would be a good way to start our circle today. Um, do I have a volunteer who can help me read the poem? Awesome. Yeah, Zaid, I would love for you to do it. We observe how burdens braved by humankind are also the moments that make humans kind. Let each morning find us courageous, brought closer, heeding the light before the fight is over. When this ends, we'll smile sweetly, finally seeing, in testing times, we became the best of beings. Thank you so much for reading that. Um, and as I was listening to you read the poem, there was a lot that came up and kind of resonated for me. I'm wondering, um, as you guys kind of take a moment to think about the, the words of the poem, 
Are there any um, specific things that maybe stand out or, or sit with you um, about it that you'd like to share? Yeah, go ahead, Jaya. One thing that sat with me when it, in the poem, when it said, let each morning find us courageous and both close, closer, um, that sat with me due to the pandemic and um the elections like we needed that we needed to hear that because it's a lot going on in the in our in our country and this pandemic i feel the, it's not getting any better because the number is going up again so it's like a 50 50 like we might get off of this pandemic but we might not so i think we just needed that quote to be left on our hearts and stuff so yeah yeah, that was beautiful, Jay. Thank you so much for sharing that that um, beautiful thoughts about a beautiful line. I appreciate it. Is there anybody else who wanted to share? Yeah, go ahead, Zay. Yeah, um, kind of similarly to what Jay has said, um, I think the first two lines, um, we observe how burdens buried by human kinds are also the moments that make humans kind. I think that um, with all the struggles that we're going through collectively as people right now, um, it's a little bit difficult to uh, like kind of exist because of all the different things that we're going through. And I think that those struggles and those burdens collectively make us a little bit stronger as people and a little bit nicer. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I, I certainly hope that with every everything that's going on that you and, and Jaya spoke about as well, um, that as we continue to be maybe tested in certain ways and these burdens definitely turn us into kinder, um, maybe more compassionate people towards each other. Thank you. Uh, any other, maybe I'll take one more person. Yeah, go ahead, Cindy. Um, where it says, when this ends, we'll smile sweetly, finally seeing. It just reminds me of like, at the end of everything, like. It will finally be over and we'll be good and everything is going to be fine. Yeah, I certainly hope so. And it's a, it's a wonderful, I think, wish and kind of prayer for, for the future that, you know, at the end of, of a hard time, uh, whether that be individual, individually, maybe personally, or like for family or community or country <laughs> or the world that we're currently going through, we'll be able to find um, smiles, um, you know, at the end of them. So I appreciate um, you guys sharing. I also appreciate your your reflections on a beautiful poem. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to our values round. Um, and during that time, we're actually going to consider what are the values that we feel are really important to bring into this space. Um, with us um, and, and guide our, our discussions in the circle. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is grab a piece of paper, a post-it note. Um, if you don't have something to write on, that's okay. You can write it in the chat. What we're gonna do is we are going to pick a value that is important to us, um, that we wanna bring with us and we're gonna share it out. Um, and that's going to be, those are going to be the values that we're going to uphold while we're here. Right. And if you're done, you can go ahead and hold it up for everyone to see. Awesome. I see honesty. Jaya said respect in the chat, determination from Cindy, and I wrote empathy. And I mean, those values sound lovely to me, but do you guys agree that these are values we can try to uphold? And go ahead and give me a thumbs up um, if you agree, or you can use your reaction button. Perfect. Great. Um, thank you for those responses. Uh, in addition to the values, um, we also have a set of guidelines that we are going to um, kind of follow as well uh, while, while we're in the circle together. Um, and it will really help frame our conversation. Um, and so the slide on the screen shows the guidelines that were actually authored by, or co-authored by Christina um, 
one of the students in this group along um, with um, a student named Desmond. Um, and so I'm going to ask Christina, do you mind reading the first two? Yeah, sure. So the first one is we will agree to disagree instead of dis debating. We will be respectful of ourselves and others. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, let me see. Cindy, do you mind reading number three? We will use our talking pieces and let others finish before speaking. Thank you so much. And Zaid, can you read number four? We will strive to be engaged with what others share and bring energy to the group. Thank you. And then Jaya, would you mind reading the last one? <clears throat> we will strive to be brave and not be afraid to express ourselves in ways that feel good using either our voice or the, or the chat. Both are welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And then the point about um, using uh, your voice in ways that feel good. So if you want to answer in the chat, that's totally fine. Um, if you want to unmute yourself when we get into the storytelling rounds um, to answer a question, that's totally fine too. Um, so like we did in the values round, if you feel like these guidelines feel like healthy agreements, things that you feel comfortable um, kind of agreeing to following while we're in the circle, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I see Zayd already agrees. Perfect. Christina got a double thumbs up. And Cindy and Jaya, perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing my screen and actually turn the facilitation, I guess, <laughs> roll over to Christina, um, who is going to be my circle co-keeper, and she's going to be leading the storytelling rounds. Thank you, Anam. As we get started today, I want to remind us that we will be using our virtual talking pieces. My virtual talking piece today is this pink Polaroid camera. Today, um, and I will pass my virtual talking piece to the next person for their turn. That person should then pass their virtual talking piece to the next person. The order of the speakers in our circle today will be the following. Jaya, Zaid, Cindy, and then back to Anam. So our first question for today is, what is one way you show respect for others and how has this changed in a virtual setting? Please remember that you are welcome to pass if you are not ready to answer the question. The talking piece can be passed back to you if you want to add something after we have gone around the circle. So I will start and then I will pass my virtual, the virtual talking piece to Jaya. So one way you can show respect to someone is actually listening to what that person has to say and not just allowing the information that that person is telling you to go through one ear and then out the other. And that doesn't show that you're actually listening to them. So. And this has changed in like a virtual setting because it's not like how you can talk to someone face to face, like in person. So you have to like do it virtually and it's just not the same as in person. I will now pass the talking piece to Jaya. Thank you, Christina. Um, what is one way you show respect for others? I said eye contact and body language. Um, eye contact and body language is key. So when you, you're when you're when, some, when you're talking to someone and they're talking to you, like you're listening to them, you're giving them eye contact, you're showing them like you're agreeing with them. So that and how did it change in a virtual setting? Um, I'm used to talking to my teachers and friends in person. So now I'm gonna talk to them over Zoom and FaceTime. It's kind of weird because like. You don't want to say goodbye. You want to say see you later, give them a hug, but we can't do that through a virtual learn a virtual device though. It hurts, but it's going to get better. Now I pass my talking piece to Zaid. Thank you. Um, for me, uh, a big part of respect and especially in conversation is like having a like a give and take and like being fair to each other when they're speaking. Um, that can be a little bit difficult over virtual, like things like Zoom and stuff like that, because people can tend to talk um, over one another. But I think the use of things like talking pieces or either, or even just like letting people know when you're finished or handing it off to someone else um, is really great um, because it prevents people from stepping on each other's toes and making sure that everyone gets the chance to communicate themselves. Um, I'll pass my talking piece over to Cindy. 
One way um, I show respect to others is help them out if they're struggling with anything because they might need it. And that has changed through virtually because I, I can't tell if they need help. So it's harder to tell. And, yeah. and I will pass my talking piece to Ina. Thank you so much, Cindy. Um, one way that I try to show respect um, for others is being as present as possible, which some of you guys have spoken to. Um, the way that that has changed virtually is I recognize that my capacity to be present has changed sometimes, like just sitting in front of Zoom and a computer, like you get really fatigued and sometimes it is hard to like really show that you're, you're listening all of the time. And so um, part of that being transparent and honest is like communicating that as well and like rescheduling if I need to um, and all of that, but just trying to be as honest as possible about where I'm at. Christina, back to you. Thank you. And thank you for your responses to our first question. Our second question is the following. How can you tell when someone is showing respect for you and how has this changed in a virtual setting? So, um, I believe how you can tell when someone is actually listening or showing respect to you is when they're actually listening and they're not just getting distracted by the things that are around them. And they're actually taking in the information that is being received or given to that person. And it's changed in like a virtual setting because you don't know if that person is actually listening because like on Zoom or a virtual setting, you can actually turn off your camera and turn off your mic. So you wouldn't really know if that person is actually listening to you. So I'll press the talking piece to Jaya. Thank you, Christina. Um, um, how can you tell when it's someone showing respect for you? Um, if you ask them a question about what you're talking about and they could like give you feedback um quickly and not like do the uh um guess how you know they're showing the respect um how did it change in a virtual setting um i'm used to going to my teachers during lunch or after school in the morning to get help or ask for clarification or something but since this pandemic and we're virtual i'm it's not easy to go to them go to their classroom or ask them or pop in. So like you gotta wait till they respond back and they can't respond back that early because they have kids, they have their own families to worry about and um you don't know what you don't never know what somebody else is going through. You so you can't pressure them into like grade your work or act or retake on something. So I feel like that is one thing that concerns us during this pandemic due to like we can't go to our teachers straight then and there and tell them, oh this is what I'm need help it we have to wait for their response so yeah i'll pass my token piece to the thank you um for me i think one way i can tell is through the like responses that people give so if someone is like community communicative like they're reciprocating the same kind of energy or the amount of um, attention that you're putting into a subject so if I'm asking questions, they're actively listening and like responding with their questions. Um, this is actually really, I don't think it's changed very much through um, virtual because if I pose a question on a Zoom and someone else is responding or they're not giving like one word answers or kind of like dismissive things, then it shows that they're actively listening and responding in the, um, in the conversation. Um, I'll now pass my talking piece to Cindy. Um, one way I know someone showing respect to me is um, when like they don't leave me hanging and talking to myself, they're actually paying attention. And that has changed virtually because I don't know if like they're getting distracted or if they're actually listening because you can't really tell um, because sometimes they have their camera on and sometimes they don't. But yeah, and now I will pass my talking piece to Emo. Thank you so much, Cindy. And I am like resonating with, with everything that you guys are saying. Um, I think for me, the way I can tell if someone is showing respect to me um, is um, through how much I think that they care or like how much care maybe I can see um, in terms of their response. Like um, 
Cindy and Drea were both saying in a virtual setting, sometimes like it, you can't read it in the same way. Um, you know, maybe somebody being late or, um, you know, being a little bit distant could be because there was like a family thing going on or they have personal stuff, or it could be because they don't care. <laughs> um, and so I like to try to give space um, to really understand um, the care and the intention um, and then try to be flexible around that. Um, so I will pass the talking piece back to Christina. Thank you. And thank you for all of your responses to our second question. We have had a meaningful conversation about respect and I hope we continue to consider how respect shows up in our lives. As we finish our storytelling rounds, I would like to check in with how everyone is feeling as we check out for the circle. Please share one or two words that describe how you are feeling about the circle today. So one word that I can describe how I'm feeling about the circle today is energized because I'm feeding off of everyone's responses and energy of how they elaborate to the questions that they're answering. So that's how I'm feeling. I would now pass the talk piece to Jaya. Thank you, Christina. Um, two words, how I'm feeling vibrant and joyful. Like it's it's an honor to be here with you guys today and talk to y'all and see stuff from your perspective. Um, we don't do this a lot at my school. So just to do this with other people and the restorative justice, I really appreciate it. I'll pass it to the evening. Thank you. Um, for me, I'm pretty, I'm feeling one pretty positive, um, hearing all you guys' different responses and all the things that you have to say is very enlightening and all you guys' kind of takes and opinions are all very interesting to listen to. So I'm feeling very positive about that. Uh, another word that I would use to describe how I'm feeling right now is a little bit uh, very alert, um, not in the negative sense, but more of I was a little bit tired, kind of a little exhausted when I first came into the meeting. But uh, having conversations with you guys about these different things and respect and things like that is kind of alerting and it's very interesting and it kind of woke me up and got me very interested in what we're talking about. Um, I will now pass the talking piece to Cindy. Two words to describe how I'm feeling about the circle is happy and cared for because I feel like um, we got, we talked about a lot of stuff and like our feelings and like the poem we, we, were, we read before, like it was interesting and all that, yeah. And I will now pass my talking piece to Ina. Thanks, Cindy. Um, I feel clear. Um, like Zay, I was feeling a little bit, I mean, it's just been a crazy week. And so um, coming and being in circle with you guys has, have given me some clarity. Um, and for that, I am grateful. And so I'm feeling grateful as well, um, both in terms of like being able to share with you guys, but also being able to listen to all of your great thoughts and ideas. Um, was was really was really awesome. So um, thanks everyone for that. And I will hand the, the talking piece back to Christina. Thank you. I would like to close our circle today with the final mindful moment and a quote. Please close your eyes and take three deep breaths in and out. I will now read the quote. Respect people who find time for you in their busy schedule, but love people who never look at their schedule when you need them. Thanks for participating in the circle today and have a great day. Awesome. Um, thank you all so much for, for being in the circle, like Christina said. Um, and I hope that um, this video has been a helpful demonstration of a community building circle. Um, the community building circle model can be adapted to the needs of your group, including the check-in, the mindful moments, and the questions used in the storytelling rounds. Um, for more information on and additional resources on virtual community building circles and the other restorative justice um, tools we use, um, please visit, visit restorativedc.org. 
Thank you again.